Um, if the seller won't tell you how much they owe on the property, can you write them off or can you still deal with them? Um, you, you can still deal, deal with them. You know, um, it just tells you that you know, they're probably not motivated enough to give you a big cash discount. So it's probably not for a cash deal, but it'll be good for just like a lease option deal. Because you know, at that point, you really, you really don't care how much they owe. Out of 10 calls that you make, how many uh, do you expect to close? Um, well, it depends on how, how uh, much you follow up with them to make sure you get a flex option signed. Um, and then it has to do with, okay, so once you get a flex option signed, the, the, you know, just because the seller agrees with you over the phone doesn't mean that they're going to follow through and actually sign the document and fax it back to you. Okay, so, so you know, so... So, um, so, so the first step is to get them to agree. Second step is follow up, follow up, follow up, and get them to sign the agreement. And after that, it has everything to do with how heavily you're marking that house for sale. Um, so, for example, um, you know, um, uh, and this is, I mean, we have a lot of stories, but here's a, here's a really recent one uh, from Oscar in Lubbock, Texas, where the, from, from the, from, you know, from from the time that he he uh, from time that he got my course and calling for flex option to the time that he actually got paid what in six days. Because he he was when so he he was he started making phone calls really quick, and then once he got the the flex option, I mean he he was just marking those houses everywhere on the uh, on the internet uh, with signs, so he's doing everything he he can. And so the first one came really quick in six days, and then, um, I mean, uh, like within one month, I think he did like seven deals or something. Because he, he was on a roll, like, I mean, he, he was unstoppable. And so it has everything to do with how much effort you're going to put out in marketing these properties. <coughs> you know, getting a flex option signed is just one part of the transaction. You, 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 you can't end there. You can't stop there and say, you know, now that I have it signed, okay, you know, the house is going to sell itself. <coughs> it's not. It just means that now you have a product to sell, but you still got to market it to find buyers to sell it. Okay? So, so, I mean, to answer your question, it has everything to do with, um, you know, how, how, much you how, how well you follow up with the sellers to get the flex option signed and then how aggressive you get with marketing those houses for sale. Um, yeah, that's what we're going to go into next, yeah. On this, on this flex option, uh, do we just send the blank one or do we start filling in because it says buyer and how much we're going to buy it for and how much per month? Right. Because I've uh, got somebody wants, we'll do either way. Right, right, right. Uh, no. So, so for it, it, it and, and, and that has to do with how much information have you gotten from the seller when you're talking to them. For the purpose of, um, of, of, of this script, okay, for the purpose of this script, then you can just send it to them blank and then you follow up with them and says, okay, well, let's go through this together, okay? So I agree to buy it from you for this amount, okay? And I agree, you know, so you go through it, there's only like five lines, and so make sure they understand it. Um, now, if you, if you go, if, uh, once you get used to this, and I'm, I'm, the reason why uh, the reason why I'm doing it this way is because I, 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 I'm trying to, you know, to, to help you overcome the hurdle of, you know, hey, this is way too much. Um, you know, th this is way too many questions. I don't want to call and ask all this. Once you get a hang of this, um, you're going to use a, a seller questionnaire form that has like 30-something questions. So w w when that happens, then you, you have all of the answers that you need to fill out the flex option before you send it out. You guys understand that? So I'm just taking you through different stages right now. So like the, the, the last thing I want to do is just is to overwhelm you. So I'm trying to make it as easy as I can so that way you can take action and make these calls. Got, you all understand that? Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, we do have an actual seller questionnaire forms that you must fill out. The, the name, contact information, the property address, how many bedroom, bathroom, the square feet, all of that. It's, it's a full-blown 
sell a question there. No, it's it's applicable to all states. Yeah, um, it's yeah it's 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 um it's generic enough that it's applicable to all states. Okay. Yes. Good job. <laughs> um, <laughs> good job. <laughs> the, the the reason why we ask those questions, okay, is so that way we can gauge how motivated is this seller, okay, as well as if they're motivated enough to give us that number, okay, is the, it allows us to um, to to think of more ways that we can structure this deal. Okay, you can't expect all of the sellers to be your customers. You can't, ex in, in any type of business, you don't expect everybody to be your customers. You don't want everybody to be your customers. You only want the customers who want to deal with you. Okay, and so, 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 so no, I mean, this is, I mean, I, y y you're not going to get every single seller out there uh, to agree to do this with you or to agree to do anything with you, okay, and you don't want them to. I'm back on that flex option thing for the buyer. Mm -hmm. Would I put my corporation there, an LLC, or myself? Um, because you're only assigning it, you're assigning it. You're not a part of, uh, you, you're not going to stay in the game. Yes. Okay. Uh, you, you're only assigning it, then it really doesn't matter. Uh, for us, whenever we assign contract or we double close on the contract, this is for us personally. Um, you know, you, you have to consult with a, this is my disclaimer here, you know, consult with, with a CPA or your attorney for, um, for legal advices. But for us, whenever we, we flip a property, meaning we are either going to assign it, double close it, or we're going to fix it up and resell it, we use our uh, C Corp. And whenever we do a long-term lease option, a long-term <coughs> lease, we use an LLC. Mm -hmm. Okay, but so so in most of your case where you're just assigning, whether it's lease option or wholesale deals, you're just assigning. You can do it under your name, or you can do it under um, a, a corporation. Um, it it really doesn't matter as much. And would this be considered like ordinary income? Because you you. It is an ordinary income when you're assigning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>